Today we need to talk about the Fringer adapter with the Canon lens on the Fuji X-T3. It's pretty unbelievable, dude. Let me explain why. There's been a lot of talk uh, lately about noise and the blacks of your images or can the Fuji X-T3, how well does it work in low light? Um, my first question is always, how dark is your low light that you're shooting in? Because most of us event photographers that are working in real job scenarios in low light, we usually have enough light to work in. And it's not one EV candle worth of light that we're working in so we really don't have a problem with our blacks unless you're experimenting of course and you want to go up to 10,000 ISO just to see what happens but then you expect to see some grain or some noise what I do love about Fuji's cameras is it's more like a grain than it is noise that means texture I like texture so check this out. The following images were done with the Fringer adapter with the, my Canon 85 on my Fuji X-T3. So you have questions. Everybody's always asking me, how is the low light? I hear this, I hear that. And I'm the kind of person where I can't help you with your questions unless you show me the images that you're speaking of. Because your lighting scenarios are very different than mine. And if you had the exact same settings that I'm doing, but your lighting scenario is way darker than mine, you won't have the same results, okay? Believe it or not, these images didn't have to go as high as 800 ISO. I think I went to 1000 just so I could photograph at a higher shutter speed, but I was realizing I didn't have to do that because the people on stage weren't jumping around. They're not running at full speed. So let me go ahead and crank it down to 800 just so I have a little bit better quality of the image. And let me see what I got. As I'm working, I'm looking at the back of the camera and I'm just dying over how good these things look. What even shocks me even more, besides the fact that this lens works on my, my Fringer, was the 16 millimeter. The quality of the image, the file size, the, the quality of the actual resolution that you're getting from this camera. On the next video, I'm gonna show you that 16 millimeter at a wide shot that I cropped to just one person. I swear, man, it's like you don't lose anything. Now, granted, the smaller you crop into it, of course you're gonna lose when you blow up that image, but that's on the next video. Check out this next image. Come on, man. It's sharp, the darks look beautiful, the lighting is beautiful. Everything I have photographed with this Fuji X-T3 has been on manual mode. I have not worked this camera one time on any of its auto features. It has auto ISO, it has auto shutter, it has auto f-stop. Haven't used it once. You know why? Because the EV on the back works. And since I was uh, just playing and having fun with my equipment, a lot of these are at the 1.8 setting because I love, even though it's got that zoomed in power, that 1.8, man, when it finds the eyes directly by the back of the head on starts to fall soft, it starts to go a little bit blurry. And that's how you get that bokeh effect on the background. Now I was lucky, man. The entire wall behind the band were these big LED lights. 
And all it did was give me some beautiful bokeh in the background. So look, if you wanna see these images really close up, go to our Facebook group page, Focus with GK. There's a lot of discussion going on over there. We like to share images. Um, I like to see what you're doing. I love to see how you're, you're setting up your shots. What was your mindset behind shooting those images? And um, it's not one of those websites, it's not one of those Facebook groups where people are tearing each other down. And this could be more perfect if you did this. It's not what it is. I wanna encourage you to shoot more with your camera. I wanna encourage you to get out there and share your work. Because the more you share your work, the more, the more you become aware of what you're doing. You know what I mean? And taking that first step of getting an image of yours out into the open is probably the scariest. But our Facebook group is the easiest place to do that. And if you do have questions, I'm always here. Several of my other great subscribers are also here to help you out. So we look forward to seeing you over there. You can also follow me for some live Instagram stories uh, behind the scenes on our Focus with GK Instagram account. I'm trying to use that a little bit more to show you the, the live part of it because seeing what's actually happening and then seeing the final images are very different. And sometimes it helps to see what I'm actually doing so you can respect the final image just a little bit more. So if you're on the fence of making a switch from Canon to Fuji, like I was. Just know that the Fringer, the EFFX Pro works. Now there's a version two. And I also was told there's firmware. I need to go update on this thing. How cool is that? Firmware for an adapter. That's just awesome. But just so you know, this camera has literally been the only thing I have used for the last year of every aspect of my business. Every aspect. So food, interiors, wedding events, corporate events, product stuff, you name it, I've done it. Children, high school seniors. This camera is absolutely a beast. And I am so excited for that X-T4 because it actually has some upgrades that's well, well worth the upgrade. I mean, come on, they've got that magnetized stabilization happening. That is ridiculous, man. All right, you guys, do what you do. Stay focused on your dreams. I can't wait to see you there. Uh, this video is to be continued because Monday we're going to talk about the 16mm 1.4 on the same job. All right? Y'all have a great weekend. Peace.